you keep saying you're not going to the first round, that that somehow doesn't happen. No, it will happen. So he has a 0% chance. It's zero. Wow. Hey, Barra, do you want to you wanna have one more fight and want to end as the best? You got to face the best, and that's me. Because I'm sharp, I'm focused. And I can tell you now, I will knock him out. Every time I go in, I go 100%. And of course, I think about the fight, but not in particular my opponent. So, but but I'm, I'm an emotional guy, you know. I like to fight. I like to hurt people. It's I'm seven-time world champion now, so it's going to be a very hard day for him. But if you beat him, the belt is worth nothing, you know. And I think it's more than just a fight. Every fight, every opponent is like my enemy, you know. Mm -hmm. I always go for the knockout. I go for the kill. For me, it's not a game, you know, it's all about survival. I'm just focused on what needs to be done. But right after that, on to the next one. Amsterdam, the capital of the Netherlands, and one of the most beautiful, picturesque cities in all of Europe, lined, of course, with its historic canals. Also, Amsterdam recognized as the mecca of kickboxing. Welcome to Countdown to Glory Collision. My name is Todd Grisham. About two hours east of here in Oberhausen, Germany on December 10th, the unthinkable will happen. The fight no one thought would ever get made got made and will go down. Rico Verhoeven, the recognized Glory World Heavyweight Champion, one of the best fighters on the planet today, squares off against Badr Hari, a true legend in the sport. Both men's legacies will certainly be on the line. 2016 has seen Glory Kickboxing deliver time and time again with some of the fastest, most brutal, most electrifying fight nights ever. Coming up, as we make our way to Germany on December 10th for Glory Collision, we'll meet up with the two men set to make history in the fight no one thought would happen. Glory's reigning heavyweight champion Rico Verhoeven and K-1 legend bad boy Badr Hari speak to us about their fight. We'll look at their greatest moments in the ring and hear what fellow fighters think about the matchup. We'll also take a journey through the other divisions in Glory in a year that's seen changes at the top, new rivalries, and old champions. Later, we'll preview the other bouts on this amazing card that features two title fights and another heavyweight battle of giants. And you don't want to miss Glory's top 10 knockouts of all time. It's Countdown to Glory Collision. In the making, the fight everyone thought would never happen. Rico versus Botter in Glory Collision. Finally, the two greatest heavyweights in kickboxing battle for global supremacy. Legacies are on the line when Glory's reigning and undisputed champion, Rico, the king of kickboxing Verhoeven, takes on heavyweight kingpin Botter, the golden boy, Hare. Fighting a record 11-fight win streak in glory, Rico Verhoeven plans to make his 50th career victory his greatest. I'm gonna rip you apart, and it's gonna, it's gonna be a fun night for me. You're gonna, you will never have as much fun as I will have in this fight. The fighter the fans want to see, kickboxing's bad boy, Badr Hari, is back. I cannot remember a fight that I lost, even when I was semi-retired. Badr holds the record for the most wins by a heavyweight kickboxer. 106 with an astonishing 94 by way of knockout. Glory Collision is set to be kickboxing's defining moment. A fight worthy of the very best in all of combat sports. Now, 
The two biggest forces in kickboxing collide in the fight of the century. It's Rico versus Potter on a collision course. I can tell you now, I will knock him out. Who will be kickboxing's greatest heavyweight? The premier kickboxing event of all time. Glory Kickboxing is viewed in more than 175 countries and available in 800 million homes. Join us and be part of Glory's global audience to experience Rico versus Botter in Glory Collision. Please welcome the Golden Boy, Botter Hari. And now, Glory World Heavyweight Champion. The king of kickboxing, Rico Verhoeven. And Rico, what does this fight mean to you, to your career, to your legacy? Um, yeah, I think this is a this is going to be a fun fight. You know, it's a new school versus old school. Uh, everybody always says that everything in the past was better. Yeah, this is uh, old school. What did you say? I'm 31. Ik weet niet hoe oud het is, maar volgens mij is hij een jaartje of 6, 27. Weet je dat, uh, waar hebben we het over? Hij zei dat hij was in Japan toen ik nog steeds met shin guards was. Dus hij zet zichzelf op de pedestal dat hij oud is. Ik denk dat ik wat some old school guys as well. Nu, ik denk dat hij een old school guy is, want hij is van de K1 dagen. Ik ben I'm in top shape. Je kan niet prepare in vier maanden voor een top guy level like me. So. Ja, ik heb er hartstikke veel zin in. Ik heb hard getraind. Ik ben eindelijk gemotiveerd. Ik zat eigenlijk een beetje hoog en droog in het uh, geweldige Marokko. En uh, ja, toen bleef er iemand op mijn deur kloppen. En volgens mij heeft hij gewoon een keertje te veel geklopt. En uh, ja, nu heeft hij zijn antwoord gekregen. 10 december staan we er. En ik kan je nu alvast beloven dat ik hem gewoon ook uitsla. Geen discussie, geen gezeur, geen gezeik. Dank je wel. All right, thank you for that Q&A session. Now we'd like the fighters to stare down. Botter versus Rico. No, no, really, you know, it's, uh, I think this already shows his class. I'm here, of course, with the heavyweight champion of the world. You just got done with a training session. You seem so intense. Do you visualize your opponent when you're in the gym at all? Uh, not really. You know, I just focus on what needs to be done, and that's the work, and that's training hard every time. Every time I go in, I go 100%. And of course, I think about the fight, but not in particular my opponent. Well, you're finding a three-round fight for the first time in years. Obviously, that yeah. has to be different for you. Uh, yeah, that is different, but in the end, if it's three or five rounds, I do I do what I, I do what I do best, and that's yeah, put up a good show. Well, how will your strategy change in a three-round fight as opposed to a five-round fight? Uh, I'm gonna push the pace from the first second. Now that we're a month or so removed from the the Silva fight, was yeah. it hard to focus on him, knowing that you had this mega fight already set up and ready to go in December? No, totally not, because that's what that's what I'm saying. You know, I focus on the job, on the business that needs to be done and the business at hand back then was Anderson Silva so I focused on that. You say you weren't thinking about Botter but after you, you stopped uh, Anderson Silva you, you gave one of these. Yeah. Who was that to? Of, yeah, of course. Of course it was a message. That, that's, how I, that's how I'm going to finish you. That's how it's going how it's going to be done. And so of course in your mind you're busy with that fight but in the end 
you are focusing on one thing and that's because Anderson Silva is definitely one of the best there is and he's fought everybody he's done everything and is not a guy who you can just push aside yeah so I definitely needed to focus on him but right after that on to the next one Obviously, kickboxing is big in Holland, but to those watching around the world right now, what's the buzz in this country for your upcoming fight? Um, I think the buzz is the bad boy versus the yeah the good guy. But how big is it? Like, how many people are coming up to you? How often do you hear about it, read about it? The whole day, the whole day. Everybody's uh, messaging me on Facebook, on Instagram, on every social media outlet there is uh, on the street people say oh you ready for this fight how you feel you look ready uh, we can't wait and we support you so it's so much love and yeah that's yeah that's all you can ask from uh, from the fans and that's why, I'm, why why I took this fight why I wanted this fight is for the fans because this is the fight the fans wanted to see what's been the biggest fight kickboxing history in your mind looking back what was the fight um, the fight uh, which I which I think my number one K1 fight is the the fight versus uh, Mark Hunt versus uh, Ray Sefo when they just both put their hands down and just smacked each other in the <laughs> face that was like, yeah, one of the best fights uh, I can remember from the, the K1 days that I really enjoyed. And I, I don't think that was the biggest fight, but just that moment in that fight, just, yeah, it's still in my mind. It's crazy. Do you honestly, when you think about this Potter fight, do you see it being an exciting action fight, or do you see it being a, a fight where you're able to just neutralize him and dominate him, and the fans are going to be like, this was, this was boring? Um, no, I think it's definitely going to be an exciting fight. And but in the end, it's still gonna be like, oh, yeah, it's the outcome we expected. It's Rico that neutralized Butter, and he did what he had to do and win that fight. Your trainer said you're gonna knock him out. Is that is that is oh, he yeah. more confident than you? Is that your no, 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 definitely not. I'm definitely confident I'm gonna knock him out because he's gonna he's gonna get exposed and yeah, that's the that's the moment I'm gonna gonna show his mistakes. Now he hasn't fought at an elite level for a while. It seems like he's been kind of hovering in and out of retirement. What do you think you're gonna face when you get in the ring? Are you gonna face the best version of Badr Hari? I don't think so because it's it's difficult to be a best version of yourself. Like you said, like jumping in and out. So um, I'm definitely gonna gonna face a fit and strong Badr. That's, I'm, I'm sure of that. And because he's training really hard, of course, like he should, but in the end, he doesn't have the, the fighting rhythm, and like I have been for years. You know, it's not just one fight or two fights that I'm in this rhythm. I've been in this rhythm for years. So top yeah. fights. I'm seven-time world champion now. So, you know, um, it's going to be a very hard day for him. Let me show you this, this picture. You talked about him being in shape. He posted this picture of himself on uh, Instagram the other day, and we were all kind of like, wow, pretty impressive. What do you think about that physique? Yeah, it's nice. I like it. I don't think I've ever seen him look that good. Have you? No, definitely not. So he's definitely training hard. And I would love to see that diet. Yeah. I would love to see it because uh, I want a body like that too. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's just Photoshop. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think so. That, should, that, that would be strange. Yeah. So, but in the end, you know, it's, uh, it's all good. And... Um, yeah, I, I love to see that he trains hard because that shows he's taking the fight serious. I'm taking the fight serious and I'm going to put up a good fight for the fans. Obviously, it's a huge fight for you, but you're still, what, 27 now? You've got a long way to go. Yes, it, his legacy is on the line. This could literally be his last fight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you think that could mess with his mind once once the fight starts? Yeah, I think so. I think so. This yeah. is his, if it, yeah, if he loses this fight, well, yeah, what happens to his reputation in his mind because still in the end still the reputation is going to be there you know he put up a, a lot of good fights but yeah what's going to happen in his mind I don't know yeah. uh, I know he had a list at one point maybe he stood it with your name on it do, yeah. do you remember when you first heard you were on his list how did that uh, how, did, how did you react to that yeah I had to laugh like oh he's putting out lists now and that's the thing so people are t is, are telling me like oh because you can't bother out. oh you a boss and you don't care and let's go like, hey, this man called me out two years ago with putting me on his list, so who's calling who out? Whether it's real or manufactured, he's made people think that he, he despises you. Do you really think he feels that way about you? And if so, why? 
I don't know, man. That's it. I think so. I think um, because he said that in in multiple interviews and even interviews before he was fighting me, like he really hates his opponents and yeah, I don't know. Maybe that's that's his motivation to train or whatever. I don't know, but it's yeah, it's a certain way to go. How do you how do you feel about him as a person? So I don't know him as a person. So he does what he does and I do what I do. And in the end, we're gonna make, we need each other to make kickboxing history. So, and that's what we're doing. So I just do what I do best and that's put up a good fight and train really hard and make sure the fans get happy. And that, like I said, this is, the, this is the fight the fans wanted to see. So yeah, why not call them out and make the fans happy? Because in the end, for me, I, f I fought everybody, so the, the fights there are people gonna see is gonna be like maybe Adik Bui Rico three or uh, Breast of Arch two or whatever. Sequels, right? Yeah, you know, it's gonna be sequels, but that's not what people want to see. People want to see new fights. They yeah. want to see big fights. And this is the biggest fight in kickboxing history. So. six months ago, maybe even a year ago, he put out a, a target list with me on it, so. Well, I'll fight anybody, you know, I'm the champion. I'm, uh, I'm on top of the mountain. Hey, brother, if you wanna, if you wanna have one more fight and wanna end as the best, you gotta face the best, and that's me. So if you wanna do it, let's go. I don't care who, I don't care. I'm ready for everybody, so I will knock this guy out. I don't know what to say. Don't poke the bear. Well, they poked him. We are ready for him. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your main event of the evening. Tonight, neither man wants to go to the scorecards. Known as the bad boy, or more recently, the golden boy, one thing is for certain, the winningest heavyweight in professional kickboxing history is back, and it's all business. Badr Hari, the man, the myth, the legend. Right here at Mike's gym, just got done with a training session. You're back in the spotlight, your first fight in a year. You've only fought once in the last two years. How does it feel to be back on the main stage again? Yeah, it feels good. You know, uh, after the K1 period, uh, everything was finished. So uh, there was uh, some fighting, but it wasn't on the biggest stage. Mm -hmm. And now back on the biggest stage, I think Glory is the... And we can say Glory is the number one uh, kickboxing stage in the world. So it feels good. It feels uh, comfortable. It feels uh, where I belong. A lot of people watching you in America right now don't know yeah. too much about you. Yeah. How would you describe yourself as a person and as a fighter? Ah, as you, get to, you get to pick. They don't know anything, right? You can just start with a clean slate. Yeah, but we have Google. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, no, like I said, as a person, uh, I am who I am, you know. Uh, I'm not a clean sheet, but uh, I'm a person, and uh, it is what it is. As a fighter, uh, 
I always go for the knockout, you know, I like that. I go for the kill and uh, don't believe in second rounds. So uh, very explosive, very hungry always, and uh, always in for a good fight. Let me read a quote to you from five years ago. You said on Dutch radio, you said, I'm able to explode at any moment. I become blind to it all. There's just a certain aggression inside of me, which I don't know what to do with. And I don't know where it comes from. Does that still exist? Yeah, yeah, it still exists. <laughs> that's, just, uh, that's just how I am, you know, when I'm in the ring. You know, I just, I just want to beat people up, you know. It's not uh, like yesterday in the press conference, a lot of people talking about this or that, but I'm, I'm an emotional guy, you know. I like to fight. I like to hurt people. You, know, uh, you said in the ring, did you want to fight Rico yesterday at the press conference? It's difficult to say, you know. <laughs> really? Do yeah, you yeah, want to yeah, beat yeah. him up or yeah, not? Yeah, yeah, it, it could happen. Yeah? Like I said, you know, I'm an emotional guy and uh, I see everything personally, you know. He sees it as a sport and he sees it maybe as, you know, it's just a game. But for me, it's not a game, you know. It's all about survival and it's all about, uh, you know, being strong, you know. It's about your manhood. You know, it's more than just a fight. So some people, I'm sure little kickboxers out there, look up to you as a role yeah. model. Do they need that edge or is that unique to you? I think it's good if you have it. I think if you have it too much, it's not good. But <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have a little. But, you know, like I said, you know, I'm, I'm just I'm just a guy who goes all in. You know, I think it's more than just a fight. Every fight, every opponent, I, feel, I see like, you know, it's like a, like a, it's like my enemy, you know? Mm -hmm. Need to knock him out, need to hurt him, need to hurt him very bad, you know? There's no time to be in friends, maybe after, but before, no. Do you consider yourself a family man now? What are, I, was, what, I, was, I was always a family man. Yeah? You know, my family comes first. You know, that's one of the reasons I'm, uh, I'm so into fighting, you know? And I'm, uh, like I said, you know, I fight for the money. You know, uh, I have responsibilities, so... Uh, you know, that's one of the main reasons when you step in the ring, you know, you're like, I'm feeding my children, you know, yeah. so, <laughs> it's no nice. game. Are you a little bit nervous about this fight? No, I'm not nervous. Some athletes say if you're not nervous, you don't care. You have to be a little no, nervous. No, no, I'm not nervous. I'm, I'm not nervous for the fight. I like, let me say this, I'm not nervous for the result. You know, I know I'm going to knock him out, you know, so I, that's, that's not what I'm nervous. I'm sharp. I'm focused, but nervous now. You, you keep saying you're going to knock him out in the first round. If that somehow doesn't happen. No, it will happen. It will happen. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. Have no, you have no backup game plan. No, no, I don't need a backup game plan. What if you lose? I don't. Z he has a 0% chance. Zero. Wow. You believe that in your head? Yeah, it is what it is. Is that how you always approach fights? Yep. And if you see my fights, I always knock them out. Yes. So it's not just talk, you know? Mm-hmm. I think I got a knockout ratio of uh, ninety percent or something. Uh, you're, everyone calls you a little older. You're thirty-one years old, right? Old school. How would the thirty-one-year-old botter do against the twenty-six-year-old botter? He would knock the twenty-six-year-old botter out. You're that much stronger. No, I'm much wiser, you know. So that's what happened. I'm thirty-one. It's, it's still young in fight sports. It's young in the heavyweight division. It's young. Mm -hmm. You know, in the in in the, in the in the lighter division, it's maybe getting older. So why not say, I'll, I'll fight until I can't fight anymore. I'll make as much money as I can. No. Do you want the public to crave you to stay around? No, listen, I, I can fight like, I can fight five fights in a year if I want. Yeah. I've got a lot of people asking me, a lot of promoters, you know, come fight, mm -hmm. come fight, and they're ready to pay. But it's, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to fight a lot. You know, I think you must, you know, keep it uh, exclusive, you know. So who do, who do you need to be at your fight on uh, December 10th supporting you? Who has to be there? My family should be there, of course, and uh, that's important. I got some friends coming up, and I think uh, people will be surprised mm -hmm. how, uh, how many people support me, you know? Rico, at least from what everyone tells us, is yeah. at a very high level technically. Where does yeah. he rank in your mind with your past opponents from that perspective? How good is he? Ah, I, if, if Rico was in the K1 days, he would never be a champion. I can say that definitely. Because the competition is really high, the guys are really strong, and uh, he would not be champion. He would be a good fighter, but he would be, uh, he, he, he never would be champion. So does it make you angry when people, especially from, from this country, the Netherlands, say they think he's better than you, they watch him, they think he's at a higher level than you? Yeah, but which Netherlands? The white folks. 
Anderson, Ander, Anderson Silva said that after the fight. He told Rico, he said, you're at a higher level. Who's Anderson Silva? Right. He fought you. Yeah. When? Back. Yeah. Do you think I trade for that fight? I don't know. <laughs> you didn't we didn't, see my we didn't shape. talk. We didn't you talk didn't before see that. My shape. I saw your last fight, no, Ishmael. I don't, I don't even train for those guys. What about Ishmael Long? Your I last fight. I didn't even train for him. Also, did you train for Rico? I hope. Yeah, I'm training for okay. Rico. Okay. Don't worry about that. So, will the will the botter that was in the Ishmael Long uh, fight be able to beat Rico? It would be a hard fight. Yeah. No, of course. Listen, Rico is a, is, a, is, a, is a fit guy. He's fit. He's not strong. He's fit. You know, and his condition is. is, is, is his legs are like this. Yeah, but it's not hard. It's just big. You know, and. Uh, if, if you see, he don't, he don't damage people, you know? Yeah. He's, he's just conditionally wearing them out. And that's what happens with all his opponents. So isn't it hard to knock someone out, though, when you're saying, I'm going to knock him out in the first round, and in his brain, he's thinking, I just want to get to the second, third round where I yeah, can win yeah. this. Yeah, but I'm going to tell you uh, a, a small thing, you know, in fighting. If you don't survive the first round, there is no second round. Yeah. But it's hard to hit someone that doesn't want to be hit if that's your only goal is to play defense yeah, but he will be hit he will yeah. get hit yeah of course man listen you only cannot hit people who are invisible he's not invisible he's standing in front of me yeah so he will get hit uh yesterday at the end of the press conference what was that about how would you describe you just didn't respect him no man i don't give a fuck about him earlier in the press conference you said you respected him as a fighter you don't respect him as a person no man why should i go to it's a, it's a, it's a press conference yeah so you talk up with the press when we finish talking with the press, I'm done. But well, you've done a hundred of these. You know how it goes. Yeah, I did a million. And, but you stood face to face with those, most of those mm -hmm. guys. Mm -hmm. Some of them you punched. Yeah. At least you didn't punch him. So maybe that's why it was a good reason not to face him. Maybe. Maybe. Thanks for your time. You're more than welcome. And thanks for not hitting me, right? I'm no, pretty annoying. No, no, no. All right. We just have the Rico Frufe haircut, but... <laughs> but... Coming December 10th at the Koenig Pilsner Arena, Oberhaus in Germany. Rico versus Botter in Glory Collision. Glory's reigning and undisputed champion Rico Verhoeven versus kickboxing's bad boy, Botter Hari, is back. Rico versus Botter in Glory Collision. Live on UFC.TV. At 28 years old, Rico Verhoeven has held his belt longer than any glory champion in any weight class. He's only lost one fight under the glory banner, and that was nearly four years ago. We won 11 straight fights. Let me want to take you back, if you could, just let's start with your last loss. Sammy Schultz, what do you remember about that fight? And it was New Year's Eve in Tokyo, and I was thinking, I'm facing the best fighter in the world. And I wouldn't rather be nowhere else than <laughs> right here. Yeah, this man was a legend, living legend. So he's been a real, true champion. So, yeah, it was amazing. Take us back to Glory 7. What do you remember about that, the first fight of your, your winning streak? Uh, yeah, versus uh, Jonathan Dennis. He was a, a rushing in fighter. So we, yeah, we trained on the inside low kick, and it worked. He was on the ground, like, half of the time, so it was perfect. <laughs> Glory 9, New York City versus Zimmerman. There was a, a lot of tension for me on that fight because it was a rematch and the first time he knocked me out. He got that punch. In one punch, it's, it's, it can be over. But I won every, every round, so yeah. Glory 11, tournament style. What are you thinking? I think I did amazing. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that sounds good. You did. Yeah, you did. I, I did amazing. Right, yeah, nice. I focused only on uh, on Saki because that's that's how you win. In, you, that's how you go into a tournament because you cannot focus on a second fight or a third fight or whatever because if you don't win the first one, Doesn't there matter. is no yeah. second fight. After that, we had Gita, but I was training with Gita for for years back then, so I knew him inside out and I knew I was go I, I could break him because I I broke him uh, many times in the gym. I still remember people say I got lucky. I say, but that's like winning the lottery twice in one evening, you know, with beating the number one and the number two right. in one night. So I don't believe in luck. So then you get to fight your idol. Take us back to that moment when you're standing across the, the ring from Peter Arts. Still give me goosebumps because I saw every fight of Peter Arts. So every time the ring announcer says, he is the lumberjack. He was right in front of me. I was like, damn, 
I was to stay right in front of the lumberjack. Come on, this is crazy. June 2014, last man standing. What do you remember about that night? I was really sick. I had a, I had a fever and everything for like four days. It was a good fight, but uh, normally I put the pace even higher in four and five, but I couldn't because it wasn't, wasn't feeling well. Glory 19, a rematch against Zimmerman. Yeah, Zimmerman, he won the tournament, so he got another shot at the, at the title, but no chance at all. No love lost between these rivals. Yeah, he, he tore up his knee, so that was really bad for him. Zimmerman appears to be hurt. Look at this side of sportsmanship. Back-to-back -back fights, he's out of buoy. Mm -hmm. Take us back to that moment. He was a really skilled fighter, and he was trying to land as, as many shots as possible, but because of that, his energy went down really fast. So then after the, after the first round, he had nothing to say anymore. It was finished. December 2015, same opponent, but maybe your best highlight reel knockout. After five years coming back into Holland, being the champion, defending my title, like in my home country, that was, that was an amazing feeling. Rico fighting the perfect fight right now, everything. Varying his attack, high, low, kicks, knees, everything. He, he started too slow. He thought, I have to go for five rounds, and yeah, I finished it. was like, like, boom, you see? People saying I can't knock anybody out. Then you go to Paris, France. That was fun, it was a good fight, and you know, Brestovac is uh, definitely a, a good competitor. So now to your last victory. In Trenton, New Jersey, you're fighting Anderson Silva, but you already know you gotta fight Badr Hari in December. Yeah. I'm there, I'm the champ, I'm feeling good, I'm feeling ready for this fight. I was relaxed, I was focused shown that I'm just maturing up every fight. I really like someone that gets into the ring with me and wants to put up a fight, but in the end thinks like, what the hell am I doing here? I can't even hit this guy. 15 seconds left and this fight is over. And where he got success is he's mixing the level with his kicks. He's going low, he's going low, and then he mixes in the high kicks. Product has no idea where the and kicks again, are coming. The fight is over! Is that how Botter's gonna feel? Definitely. He's gonna feel like this is another level of kickboxing. The same thing that Anderson, Anderson Silva, yeah. because he fought everybody. And he said, hey, this was a different level of kickboxing I've, I've, ever, I've ever seen, I've ever felt before. Glory Collision is the biggest night kickboxing has ever seen. And the action doesn't stop with Rico versus Potter. To open the night, we'll see the final of the inaugural women's bantamweight tournament with the winner crowned division champion. Earlier that night in the Super Fight Series, semifinal action will take place. The first half of the draw sees Isis Verbeek of the Netherlands take on the always dangerous Amel Debbie of France. The second semifinal sees the favorite number one ranked Tiffany Van Soost of America go up against surprise package Jessica Gladstone of Canada. The winner of each semifinal will fight twice in one night for the shot at the first ever Glory Women's Bantamweight title as the year-long Grand Prix tournament draws to a close. Also, the biggest heavyweight in glory, gigantic Jamal Big Ben Sadiq, winds up for another huge knockout against rising star Ismail Ault. Currently ranked number one in the heavyweight division, Ault will look to chop down the giant Sadiq and pave his way to a title shot with Rico Verhoeven in 2017. And undefeated welterweight champion Nicky Holtzkin looks to extend his winning streak to a glory record 13 straight wins as he defends his title for the fourth time. This time, his opponent, Number four ranked Cedric Dumbe. It's Glory Collision, Rico versus Botter on Kickboxing's Biggest Night. Glory Sports International, the premier global kickboxing organization, holds the distinction of having seven weight classes with two title fights at each event. 2016 was Glory's finest year yet and saw four belts change hands while two champions extended their incredible winning streaks. The women's Grand Prix bantamweight division will soon see its first champion as four women battle it out in the Super Fight Series in Germany with the final showcased as part of Glory Collision, all taking place on the same night. 
In the featherweight division, newly crowned Gabriel Varga faced his fiercest opponent yet as Robin Van Roosmalen dropped a weight class and challenged for the belt at Glory 34 Denver. Dutch Pitbull Van Roosmalen inflicted heavy damage on the Canadian title holder before Varga's team stopped the fight at the end of the fourth round. The featherweight division has a new champion, and Van Roosmalen set a record as the first to win belts in two glory weight divisions. Van Roosmalen may return to the lightweight division in the future, where he will be keen to face his nemesis, new champion Sitichai Sitsongpinong. Sitichai took the belt from Van Roosmalen after a five-round rematch at Glory 31 Amsterdam. Sitichai exercised the demons of the controversial decision at Glory 25, and now is the man to beat. His first challenger is Marat Gregorian at Glory 36 Germany. The welterweight division has seen a series of challenges to Nicky Holzgen's supremacy, and while some have come close, none have taken the title. Martel Grunhardt and Johan Kongolo have both fought their way through contender tournaments for a shot at the strap, but each time Holzkin has added another notch to the winning streak. As Holzkin prepares to face Cedric Dumbe at Glory Collision, the welterweight division asks itself if anyone has got what it takes to steal the crown. The middleweight division has seen a quick turnaround of champions. At the start of the year, Artem Levin lost to Simon Marcus at Glory 27 Chicago. Marcus defended against Dustin Jacoby, then went on to lose by TKO to Jason Psycho Wilness at Glory 33. Wilness will defend in the new year, but with the division this tight, Wilness will need to stay on the top of his game. The light heavyweight division has seen Artem Bakhitov return to pole position after an absence that let Zach Moikasa take the interim belt in vicious style at Glory 31. Bakhitov returned to the ring at Glory 35 and unified the title with a stunning TKO of Moikasa in the second round. Could this be the start of another winning streak by a division champion? And in the heavyweight division, the king reigns supreme as Rico Verhoeven remains at the top of the pile. With 11 straight wins and five title defenses, Verhoeven has shown intelligence, technique, and knockout power as he cements his position in the Hall of Greats. But a glory collision, he'll face his toughest challenge yet as Badr Hari returns to the ring. 2017 promises even more action as the women's bantamweight champion, along with Robin Van Roosmalen and Jason Wilness, defend their belt for the first time. Sidichai and Bahitov look to extend their reign as champions, and can anyone unseat Holtzkin and Verhoeven? Glory is the fastest-paced fight sport on the planet, known for its knockouts. Whether by devastating uppercut or spectacular roundhouse kick, don't blink or you'll miss the sight of someone hitting the canvas. This top 10 could easily have been a top 20 or more with incredible knockouts from a who's who in kickboxing. But these top 10 all-time glory knockouts stand apart from the rest. At number 10, it's fan favorite David Kiria, fighting his heart out against Andy Risty across five rounds at Glory 14 Zagreb to win the lightweight world title. Can Andy Risty hold on? Oh, David Kiria, team up! Get down! Andy Risty falls down! Comebacks don't come any more spectacular than this. Lightweight champion! At number nine, the terrifying Salo Cavallari unleashes jaw-rattling hell on an unsuspecting Morad Buzini at Glory 12, New York. Very stacked. In fact, Buzini entered the light heavyweight tournament at Glory 9 as he just got dropped by Cavallari. And it is over, unfortunately, for Buzini. His birthday ends with a crushing KO loss. At number eight, it's the incredible acrobatics of karate master Raymond Daniels at Glory 16 Denver. Francois Ombang doesn't know what hit him. Referee Oscar Martinez lets this fight go on. Can Francois Ombang? Oh, what a shot from Raymond Daniels. Oh my God, that was a two touch 360 back kick. That's high level martial arts. That was the Michael Jordan kick of this sport. And two years later, Still doesn't. Dunk from Raymond Daniels. 
And number seven, we visit Glory 27 Chicago and the heavyweights, where Demorio Dennis falls victim to a Category 5 hurricane as Guto Innocent leaves the audience stunned with a brutal spin kick KO. He doesn't want to give him much room to operate. I agree. Oh! Spin kick from Innocent, and that is all! And to think, this was his Glory debut. At number six, a furious flurry of fists from Gokan Saki sent Daniel Gita to the canvas at Glory 6 Istanbul. Any single punch from the Turkish Tyson is enough to leave an opponent unconscious, but here he unleashes a devastating 12-punch combination in front of an ecstatic home crowd. Gita moves forward. Same coming up. Oh, that was a that was great, great shot. Ho! Oh, Ho oh yeah! Double shot. Oh. Saki drops Daniel Gita. He drops him. At number five, it's Glory Last Man Standing, and Joe Stitch Him Up Schilling rings Simon Marcus's bell with a devastating right cross. After a close fight that went an extra round, Schilling shocked everyone with a punch that sent Marcus's mouth guard into the crowd, and Marcus himself into next week. You can see the fatigue on Marcus. That's why the mouth guard's coming out. Oh, and Joe Schilling. At number four, it's back to New York for a brief but electrifying matchup between Tyrone Spong and Michael Dude at Glory 9. Dude surprised everyone when he dropped Spong early in the first round, but the tables turned and moments later, he was on the receiving end of a punch so hard it turned the Dutchman's legs to spaghetti. Dude. He's in big trouble here, so he's not getting up. At number three, it's heavyweight champion Rico Verhoeven fighting on home soil at Glory 26 Amsterdam and silencing the critics who say he lacks knockout power. After dominating the fight, he dropped Benjamin Adegbui like a rock with a brutal right in what many have called his crowning moment as heavyweight champion. We return to Glory 16 Denver for number two, where light heavyweight knockout machine Zach Moikasa gives Pat Berry a brutal introduction into the Glory ring with an uppercut knockout that sent Hyper Die into orbit and announced the arrival of a formidable new talent. Back as you go in round one, can Pat Berry survive? Big shot from Moikasa. And finally, at number one, Marat Gregorian shows the crowd at Glory 30 Los Angeles what it looks like when a fighter is unconscious before they hit the floor with one of the most brutal head kicks you'll well, ever see. Just put Jime in airplane mode. It's a classic kickboxing move executed perfectly by one of the rising stars of the lightweight division. With a title fight against Sinichai Sitsong Pinong coming up, the world now knows Marat Gregorian's name. Ten knockouts, each one more spectacular than the last. That's what separates Glory from all other combat sports on the planet. Many are calling Glory Collision old school versus new school. But with only three years separating Rico and Botter in age, that may not necessarily be the case. Who better to understand the fighters, what's at stake, and the significance of this fight than those that have fought in the ring? While Botter and Rico have never faced one another, many others have. Here comes Hurry ends this fight. This is not just a fight. This is a legacy fight. If you're a kickbox lover and you're going to miss this event, 
Sorry, man. You're not a kickbox lover at all. We, if, if Butter wins from Rico, that means Rico will be a champion of nothing, of nobody. He's back in! Oh, he's out. It's a hell of a fight because, uh, you know, Butter is a... Uh, it's a legend in our sport, but in my opinion, you cannot uh, come after, I don't know, one or two year break uh, fighting like just one fighter here and come and uh, beat the champion. So uh, I think Rico will win. Now he's eating punches from the champion. Big right hand from Rico hurt him. I think uh, he's a complete fighter. He's good technical. He has good stamina, good movement, uh, good head. I think his uh, mental uh, strength is uh, his big and biggest uh, uh, strength. <laughs> A fall, hard to take him down. He couldn't win, so he uh, um, he did a bit of uh, foul play. Well, I have mixed feeling about this fight. Rico can expect a lot of fire, a lot of power. If he has a good timing, he can win from Butter because Butter wants to fight. He wants to kill. Butter's defense is not 100%, but because if you look at how many times he gets knocked down. I think Rico will win. Sleep Brother Ali is from 2010, the last fight was against me. In that shape, I've never seen him again after that. Butter is a really explosive, smart fighter, really aggressive fighter. He comes for the KO. His timing is good. <laughs> yeah, when Butter has to fight, you know, if you love him or you hate him. He's really confident, you know. Uh, I think he's going to win that fight. I think he's more fitter, fitter better in condition. And uh, yeah, I think he's a better kickboxer for now. I think uh, Rico is now the best uh, heavyweight and Bader is uh, like the old school, the best of the best. So it's going to be like uh, a battle of giants. Uh, the punches of Bader, people talking about deadly punches. Well, he has really clean punches. Uh, he has really correct punches. Yeah, I got some eight counts, but yeah, they were hard. If you look at the statistics, Rico has to win. But if you look at the firepower of Butter, it could be the other way around. Of course, my goal is to be sometime champion. Mm -hmm. Glory's current heavyweight champion, Rico Verhoeven. Tonight, we show you his path from prince to king. We start off in Tokyo in a battle with the kickboxing legend and renowned champion, Peter the Dutch Lumberjack Arts. You know, finding Peter Arts, hearing, hearing his name like across me, hearing the ring speaker say, hey, and he is in the blue corner. He is the Lumberjack. I'm gonna fight him, this is gonna be crazy. <laughs> so that was a really special and defining moment in my career. It's youth versus experience as a kickboxing legend bids farewell to his Japanese fans. The crowd beginning to roar their support for Peter Arts, absorbing the kick from Verhoeven. So in the final 45 seconds of what has been one of the greatest careers in kickboxing. Your winner by split decision, Rico Verhoeven! Rico Verhoeven escapes with a split decision. A man who retires a legend. The, this man inspired me to, be, to want to become a champion. And like 20 years later, I'm in his shoes, you know? I, I took the, yeah, the fire from him. And now it's now it's on me, you know. As a real Dutch native, I'm gonna be yeah, in Peter Ars's shoes, and I'm gonna take this sport to the next level. Next, we go to the windy city of Chicago, and Rico Verhoeven's breakout performance in the heavyweight world championship tournament. Two men are left standing for this heavyweight tournament final. They had, if not the fight of the year, uh, certainly the fight of the year contender. A unanimous decision for your winner, and now Glory Heavyweight Tournament World Champion, Rico Verhoeven! The 24-year-old prince of kickboxing, Rico Verhoeven, has done it! 250 
$50,000. What are you going to spend it on? <laughs> oh, my God. Of course, I want to thank some people very quick. Yeah, you can, you can explain in words how that moment felt. You know, I fell down on the ground on tears and like, yeah, how can you explain something like that when you're, you're, it's, you're 24 years old and your life dream, so whatever dream you have in life of becoming becomes reality when you're 24. You have a, I, I could die the day, the day after that because my life dream was, was there, it was finished. I did what I had to do. After back-to-back -back wins, the oh. king returned home to defend his crown yet again at Glory 26 Amsterdam. Schedule for five three-minute rounds. This is an epic rematch. People have been counting the days down to. Thank you. Yeah, Rico talked about using a little more head movement to get inside and popping punches. He's doing just that. Right hand leading to left kick. I love it. in front of a whole country. Yeah, look at the celebration. I mean, come on, this kid's been doing martial arts since he was five years old. His dad took him to the gym. This has been his dream right here, but to raise his hands in his hometown. I think I've achieved everything in, uh, in kickboxing right now. I've, yeah, fought the best, uh, the best fighters of my time. One more time, Rico Verhoeven! And yeah, now for me, the only thing I want to achieve is staying champion. Rico looks once again to shock the world with his upcoming bout with the golden boy, Badr Hari. Stand-up fights, real knockouts, I guarantee you. Everybody who want to fight against me, get knocked out. You know, I like to fight, I like to hurt people. A uh, knockout is the most uh, beautiful thing in our sports, you know. Badr Hari, the golden boy, famed for his devastating power and brutal knockouts. Hari's road to fame began with a 2005 rematch against Stefan Lako. During this match, Hari earns himself a new signature move called the Lako Buster. His spinning heel kick not only shattered Lako's jaw in four places, it also captured him the attention and respect of the worldwide kickboxing community. His knockout over Lako instantly sparked intrigue from other top contenders in the division. Sugar Ray Sefo, a six-time Muay Thai world champion, was to be the next star to challenge the Golden Boy. Not only did Hari defeat Sefo in spectacular fashion, it sparked a six-fight win streak, including victory over the legendary Mr. K-1 himself, Peter Arts. I said to my trainers also, you know, I, I, when I was standing uh, against Peter in the ring before the referee started the first round, I, I still uh, could not believe I'm, I was standing there. Regarded as one of the greatest and most formidable kickboxers of all time, the Dutch lumberjack Peter Arts was Badr Hari's childhood idol and an inspiration for his kickboxing career. When I was a kid, he was a, a big uh, favorite of mine. Of course, you know, I think that guy uh, helped, us, helped the sport uh, to, to bring it where it is today, you know, so. After dismantling arts, Potter Hari would once again raise the bar. If he gets through the first fight against Teixeira, then I promise that he won't make it to until three minutes in the kickboxing ring with me this time. Oh! Bader makes a promise to his potential semifinal matchup against Alistair Overeem. So uh, and when, I, when that happened in, in, the, in the Grand Prix, I was like, yeah, you know, I told you guys he's not my competition. You know, he was just lucky the first time. I just hated that guy. Hari lived up to his promise, earning himself a first-round stoppage of Overeem and a trip to the final of the K-1 Grand Prix. Badr Hari's victory against Overeem was huge, but in comparison to his fight with the legendary giant Sami Schilt, Badr Hari's destiny to become the best proved to be a much taller task. 
Coming in at 6 foot 11 and 290 pounds to be exact, Semi Shield is the most decorated heavyweight kickboxer in history. He had only been stopped once in his career when Hare agreed to a high stakes match in Amsterdam. Going in as a heavy underdog, Ari brought the fight to Shield and overwhelmed him, scoring a first round KO, which would send shockwaves throughout the combat sports world and underline him as one of the all time greats. His name would forever be remembered. Botter, the golden boy Hari. All right, the talking's over. It's about time to get this thing on. December 10th, Oberhausen, Germany. Be a part of what is being described as the biggest fight in kickboxing history. Thanks for watching. Countdown to Glory Collision. We'll see you at the fight. Coming December 10th at the Koenig Pilsner Arena, Oberhausen, Germany. Rico versus Bonner in Glory Collision. Glory's reigning and undisputed champion Rico Verhoeven versus kickboxing's bad boy, Bader Hari, is back. Rico versus Bader in Glory Collision. Live on UFC.tv.